Welcome back to MSI 2024, ahead of Game 2 Picks and Bands, where Team Liquid Honda are going to try their best to come back in our Champion Select, powered by Omen and HyperX. And already, we're seeing some adaptation coming in from TES. They have decided, APA, we will allow you to play Aurelian Soul. That's interesting, because then that, that does lower the value on the Azir, because Aurelian Soul is such a good answer to the Azir. Meanwhile, we are also going to have way more options for Jackie. Okay. His Draven is up. His Senna is up. His Lucian, Lucian is, up, is again. up again. No, yeah. don't say that. No, we don't. Okay, don't they forgot. I don't want to see that don't, nobody, <laughs> nobody say anything. Yeah, nobody okay. say anything. Okay, took Senna. Right, so, okay. So, I mean, <laughs> it's like it's still going to be bad. But... I am actually really surprised to see them go oh, more for this Senna, though. Okay. Hey, there go. Okay, okay. They have a plan. They have the plan. They're bringing back the Smolder for everybody who was not completely following why Smolder left is because all the changes, they did make him way more crit reliant um, and, and reduced some of the uh, scaling and execute power there. Still very good champion, uh, but I think that we are definitely going to still, well, I don't know, yeah, very good might be a little well, bit of overstatement. It's still, it's still a serviceable. In solo queue, yeah, maybe not so much on stages. It's still a serviceable champion. It's just that you are much more incentivized to go the, the squishier Essence Reaver uh, rush build, crit build, instead of uh, going the tank build. And the reason we saw him fall off was because a lot of his innate wave clearing stuff started to fall off, right? But if you're against the old Senna, cooldown, definitely too. If you're against the Senna, it's like, oh, but that doesn't really matter as much, right? I'm still going to be able to slowly farm out the wave. I'm not going to be creating this massive weak spot on the map in the same level against the Senna. So I do really like this. The problem is, though, I'm curious where that Orin's going, because that could be a Senna Orin down for Mako. We've seen Orin flex into that position with the Senna. Yeah. And now that could be your go button to start diving this little dragon. I actually thought they were going to lock that Vi, because Vi is so good versus Smolder. I, I just curb stopping Smolder, because you, you have Vi <laughs> ultimate, and then you have a That's Orin. a grown woman versus a baby dragon. Yeah. What are you trying to do? <laughs> You have a Vi ultimate holds him in place for the Orn ultimate to come through, and you just uh, instant one of a combo. But uh, they go for the Zin's out instead for uh, for that dueling power again. And of course, Zin is amazing with uh, Senna on the team as well. It allows Zin to just go crazy into the front line. APA is going to grab up his dragon that was unbanned uh, in the early stages, regardless of it being blind into cream. And then try and protection ban versus some of those cream uh, style champions. The Ari here. Do they, uh, what else do they want to ban out from him? Well, this is the thing. I think Aurelian Saul is a good answer into Azir, but I think Aurelian Saul blind is a very risky pick because, yeah, you can get rid of some of the Aries and that kind of stuff, but Cream has a plethora of assassin champions that he is willing to bring out. And yes, you can get some damage in the early stages, but I wouldn't be surprised if Cream brings out something that can do very well now into the Aurelian Saul. And then you're kind of in the same picture as last game where he just didn't really have enough pressure to keep Kareem controlled and he gets to come into this position as not completely taken over the game. He had Jackie Love in hand, but definitely working with Jackie Love to be that menace against Team Liquid. So the Volibear banned away as well as the Jax. Jax could be played by either Impact or Umpty, but it was Umpty recently who got the pentakill on the champion. It looked damn good. Certainly a favorable matchup into the Zen. So just trying to make sure that Tien has the tools to take over early. On both sides so far, you know, we have a lot of scaling power in terms of the Senna and the Orn versus the Double Dragon duo on the side of TL, but Vi feels like something that you have to take, but does it just make it so easy for TES to say, oh, how about a quick Tom Kench? I, 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 I wouldn't like the Vi Vi on the TL side because you don't want to dive in with the Double Dragons. Usually you're looking for some kite back stuff, uh, but they do already have the Nautilus too, so they opt to go with some some dueling power here a little bit early, the Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai top got those uh, the nerfs to the rage generation and the sustain, but Rek'Sai jungle still pretty popular uh, with a lot of, especially solo queue junglers, but we are gonna see it uh, here, of course, in the hands of Umpty. Yeah, I think that's the big thing here is that you need something that more than likely you're gonna see the push coming through in mid lane, especially now with the Corky locked in against the Aurelian Sol, and you can look for these invades with uh, TN if you want to, to try and get into the face. So having something that's a strong dueler, like the Rek'Sai for Umpty, is going to work out well. Now we just get to figure out if this Orn is going topside, or if it is going to the hands of Mako, which is what I probably suspect here. Yeah, top esports here. Some pretty good scaling with Corky, Orn, and Senna all on their team, on their side too. Um, but TL, they're kind of famous for their double dragon scaling here. The last lock-in will be the TF. All right, so let's see. What do they R5 counter pick impact into the Twisted Fate? Using the Rek'Sai flex to now free up a more optimal matchup on the top side of the map, just as TES flex the Orn down to the support position. How deep does the pool go? What does impact have to answer the Twisted Fate? So 
because the Nautilus and the Smolder isn't a very aggressive lane, there is always the opportunity to start like moving the TF and Ornn around, depending on the matchup, right? Maybe you go for some sort of lane swap here as well. So I'm curi really curious to see how this is all gonna pan out, but yeah, I could easily see this Senna just end up swapping lanes depending on what the lane swap scenario is gonna be or if we get any, but Either way, I think if you're top esports, pushing mid, pushing top, you have the opportunity to shove in with TF and start to roam, work with TN, try and put the herd on towards Umpty, and a very, very strong bot side that's going to be, our top side that's going to be happy with it, and a farming bot side that's not really going to be able to get destroyed that heavily against something like a double dragon comp on TL. I think the big concern for me is, can you make it to the point where those dragons are strong, yeah. right? You look at a Zinzao, you look at a TF, I see simple to execute. TES have also been playing hard to execute, and they've been executing beautifully, so when they simplify it, they get even more nervous. On the side of TL, though, something Smolder, you know, probably something they've been cooking, working on, not something other teams have been playing, have been picking up, so we have to see what their interpretation of the pick is. We There's a lot of knowns when it comes to the pick. We know how good it is late game. We know what it can do overall if we get to the later stages. The early game, navigating when this champion is much weaker, is going to be the thing we need to see TL do flawlessly. All right, Team Liquid, time to turn it around. They've got APA on his Aurelian soul. See if he starts typing immediately. <laughs> so he does. Into the game. And he does. Spoiler alert. Good old impact. <laughs> imp impact on the top side, you know, the, the honorable good luck, have fun. Uh, and then APA immediately comes out. You forgot your third band, Cream. <laughs> Tien immediately <laughs> says, focus, man. <laughs> I love how Tien came, came into it. Like, I'm going to go right at Yappa. Yep. Wants the yapping to stop. Okay. Could just mute him, but would rather just uh, make the prospect of typing anymore feel maybe not so good. All right, well. They did not survive the Jackie Love Lucian. Let's see if they could survive the Jackie Love Senna. The good news, a lot less kill pressure in the first few levels of the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At least Senna has to collect souls. Oh, wait. True. This motor snuck in. They just managed to get around the corner. I thought Mako might have just spotted him there, but Top Esports have set up pretty heavily on this bottom side. Uh, Jan? Jan? Stack. Getting stacks. Stack number one. And then he taunts. Thumbs upping. So they got the ward out for the potential lane swap, so TL really wanted to try and figure out where Mako and Jackie Love was. Just unfortunate that Smolder had to use his face to figure out where the two of them were, but either way, it will be the 2v2, which I think TL are going to be very happy about. Pretty content. Of course, there is the TP for Yawn and Impact. It would be a huge use of resources, but they could rapidly reassign lanes. Trying to protect this third bush here. Our stacks. Both sides keen to stack. Ward gonna go down. Hook goes in. Nice unstoppable coming in for Mako, starting with the Bellows Breath just to ensure. Fall too far behind in the level one trade, but Jackie Love and Mako taking control of the brush, taking control of the lane here. Gonna try to end up with an early advantage. Also interesting to see 369 not taking the ghost in the top lane matchup, instead opting in towards the exhaust. So feels like he's probably gonna be the uh, center of attention when it comes towards Umpty and Impact, trying to see if they can get Impact ahead on this this rumble. Because when you get to those later team fights, with the potential setup from Core JJ and Umpty then to follow up with the knockup as well, those rumble ultimates could be the defining factor against a scrap in top Esports and uh, we'll, objectives. And we'll see if Jackie goes roaming and Mako starts to get uh, some extra solo experience on the Orn, because he's been able to take, of course, the teleport on the Orn since he is paired. Uh, with the Senna on the bottom side. So top still uh, do have two teleports to their name, even though they're facing three. Exhaust coming out, 369 adapting to the match, but normally see the ghost, but just does not want to fall prey. That level two overheat all in. So extending the trade just to make sure he evens things up. Yeah, the cannon minion wave there. So, and, you know, stuns him up, gets the, a lot of the wave aggro there onto impact. So as impact is walking away, it takes a lot of damage in that. And look at the Zinza now immediately coming up towards this top side. They want to look for the dive off this impact. How much damage can you do to 369 before Tien gets here? Well, Hard. Umpty's on the way as well. Impact ready to overheat. 369 about to have gold card again. Tien already dashed forward and used the win, becomes lightning, however. Impact is overheating, though. He's going in, wants to lock up 369. Quick flash forward, flash to save you for 369. One more auto not going to come through, but Impact has a flash of his own. First blood now coming in. Impact, scrap shield holding on for a second, but Tien going to get a quick kill back, and Umpty taking the tunnel. But the fact that Impact has his TP to get into the lane means he'll be able to pick up the majority of the CS. So Umpty able to escape with the tunnel means that it could work out well for TL. We're going down, Yawn taking a lot of damage from Jackie Love. 
Not quite going to get finished off there. Trading, of course, means more stacks for the Smolder, but now Bullied out of lane is going to be forced to use that teleport. Yeah, Jackie is famous for being one of the most aggressive set of players ever. Always on the front lines, always stacking up, always chunking them down, and they do get the teleport out. I think it's the consistency that we're starting to see from Jackie Love. The way he might actually find the court. JJ here. Oof. Quick flashback from JJ, but Yawn, he's already reset. He's already back. Jackie Love getting lower and lower. The Smolder looking to grab a kill. The extra bit of healing. He's locked down for just a second. Jackie Love flashes out to safety. Blinking health bars. 50 HP remaining, but he will walk away. I will say, Yawn, probably the best uh, Smolder in the LCS as well. They were undefeated with the Smolder. Of course, that was at peak Smolder. <laughs> super, yeah, I, super OP I times. Think there's the new era of Smolder mm -hmm. where he's maybe not so highly tuned, let's say. They actually tuned him to be a baby dragon now. Oh, no. Oh. Impact, just a Yordle in a robot suit. He's the one who has to run away now. Gold card, the follow-up again. The simplicity of execution here. Impact, no tools left to escape. Tien not whipping anything this time. Really good lane game from Tien. Sneaks up into that side brush, and even though Impact wards it out, it's too late. The wind becomes lightning, and Impact becomes gold. What can TL respond with, though? Kareem has to respawn uh, re and upon back in base to come into lane. And you could potentially look for a play on that bottom side if you wanted to. They were setting up a lot of members on the bottom side, but the push isn't quite there for Yon and Core JJ yet. Jackie Love and Yon just stack trading left and right. Kareem backing up for a brief second, but speaking of stacking, APA doing pretty well here in the mid lane, only going to get easier as he gets more levels under his belt. Quickly pushing that mid wave. We know. Porky, especially as we get later in the game, that poke is going to be so hard to deal with. Yawn trying to sidestep with a flap, flap, flap. Hook back onto Jackula. They know he has no summoners available. I don't think they have the damage to extend this fight. Mako just so much beefier than a lot of these early exchanges. Root only going to connect onto one. Lock down, set down. Jackula burning, ignite ticking. Yawn needs to back away. Tian on the way. They might just try to press for the dive here. They, the Zin is so damn strong. Yeah, they know he's here. So Yawn and Core JJ just have to buy time for APA to get here. I get they're baiting. And swing and try to fall off the hook. Oh, oh my. The sidestep from Tian. APA's on the way, the dragon's coming down, Yon. but Yon's just gonna die! Protect that dragon, Yon's just gonna die. Flashing out, trying to get a bit more damage down. Mako gonna grab the kill, APA on the way in. Has he already burned the flight? It looks like the answer is yes. They will just settle for defending the tower. Look at the top side though, Umti wants to try and respond here. 369, won't be able to clear out this wave. No TP available for top esports to try and protect him. 369 about to take over to level 6, but crucially, they've denied him that last little bit of XP. Oh, have to be careful about wasting their CC too soon. Faster level 6 coming in from Impact. Should be an easy dive. Ignite going down, but nothing more than happy to try and finish the job. Impact stands back, tanks the aggro, makes sure the dive goes off without a hitch. Meanwhile, because of the bottom side successful play for TES, they're going to pick up the first dragon of the game while APA takes over bottom lane. Does push this one out as on respawn you get your duo here. Yannick or JJ move towards mid. It's quite an even game state though at the moment. The fact that you a oh hang on, I oh, know that's gonna go back top. Oh umpty! Trying to contest umpty. Umpty. I'm not gonna take him out. We'll secure just a single grub there. Yeah, I still think you're in a decent spot here as TL. Yes, you've got a minor gold lead coming through for top esports, but the fact you've got great scaling with APA and Yawn puts you in a decent spot. You're not you're able to respond to a lot of situations on that top side as well. We already talked about how good Rumble will be if you're able to get him some sort of control in that top side matchup. So for TL, this is a much better game state than what we saw at the same minute mark in the last game. Yeah, certainly is. Uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of game states better than the, the game number one for them. So, was, was Jackie Love being 2,000 gold ahead in like five <laughs> minutes, man? I still think Yawn Yon and Core could have avoided a little bit more damage uh, as TN came, came through for that bottom yeah. side dive. Um, but they'll be happy that it's not even worse this time around. Aurelian Soul quite good at putting a stop to these minion waves. Yep, Cream, not too threatening either. Obviously has the tier, has the coal. Five, ten minutes is going to be a lot scarier, but for now not much of a threat at all. Impact spotted out here. Jackie Love stepping forward, extra movement speed. Ten confident flash. The root already connecting. Impact's got nowhere else to go. Red carpet there, but nobody's going to take the invitation. Slowly but surely cut down on the top side of the map. That is perfect timing. They knew that Impact's flash was enough. Cream gets a lot of attention in mid lane, but I don't think they can look for the dive here on Team Liquid. So Cream will be able to back away. And as bad to say, I think fight top esports had overextended on top side, but with so much use by APA, you, you can push them off, but I think Top Esports can still win out in a fight. Yeah, they do have a smite advantage here for Umpty, so they chase them off, and they're going to grab uh, the second grub for themselves here as, as they come right back in. 
And then you get that reset from uh, both 369 as well as the... the but setup. I think Impact getting caught there was such a massive mistake. You had actually got the push in bot and rotated Jan and Core JJ up. So you would have had the numbers advantage to take the fight, to force them off and find that big win for TL. But with Impact getting caught, you'd get them pushed off, but they still get a Void Grub and you end up giving that kill across the top esports. Yeah, Impact going to be severely behind in this game because of all those top lane shenanigans. The Dragons continue to stack there, though. Jackie as well doing a pretty good job stacking. 30 souls for himself in nine minutes. I think that's one of the big things, the difference in scaling. Both these champions relatively low impact setup, of course, oh. additionally so because she's not farming. But the utility she offers for a champion like the Zin has been incredibly impactful on this early game. Whereas Yanya, you know, the Smolder, not really a lot in the kit other than wave clear, a bit of harass. Can't offer too much yet, but it's getting closer and closer. 225, of course, the break point, 125 there as well for a bit of extra AOE to make the stacking faster. But Yannick Four has to be careful. They look for Atian, forced to back off, retreat away from wave. He's still coming in behind them, though, and they don't realize this. Nice sidestep on the one becomes lightning. Quick flap, flap, flap from Yan. Good response from Umti, though, on the top side. He's just going to steal away all the camps, so making sure that he's still playing heavily into 369, denying him from being able to extend the lead that he has, but 369 still wants to. 369 wants He knows Umti's there. <laughs> yeah, 369 has his uh, exhaust and his flash, so gets a gets a little cheeky with some harassment. But I think it still would have been a little bit dangerous. You can, like, Rexai hits that oh, Q, she holds the front side. Jackie Love cannot miss with the follow-up. He's not going to connect. Quick flash out from Yawn. Calling in mom for a bit of help to clear the wave and potentially stop the dive, but we've seen this one before, boys. It's a little bit hard for this molder, but body block there for JJ. Keep it locked up. Cream on the way down. John's got nowhere to go though. He's gonna flap into the wall, and now it's a double TP. TES have they overstepped. John likely to fall. Core JJ gonna drop as well, but APA is here, locking up one member. Mako going unstoppable for the kill traded back for the side of TL. Alti only gonna connect onto one. Impact still stepping up, wants to take Cream down. Massive damage from the Rumble, and TN's trying to turn it back. In the meantime, Jackie Love just continues to auto attack. Uncontested, the kill there. APA free to reset the flight. One going down. He's giving him the full re 360 with another TP coming in. Up, he's already here for the setup. Mako wants one more kill on the APA. He's got more flight over the knock up there. Mako in the 2v1, but it's not the 2v1 because Jackie Love is still another there. Another TP. Support. Another TP. The fight's not done. No bells are ringing. We're going for round three, baby. MT on the run. Core not coming. They're calling it here. That's the end of the skirmish. The poke from Cream, not quite enough. <laughs> time, time. Everybody chill out. Top lane is where Yon went with his teleport. He's like, I'm not going back to that mess down there. Going back up top side. Clean up the rest of these minions, but they're making it exciting this time around. In the end, top esports, though, still with the 3,000 gold lead. And they should be able to reset, get that control, and potentially look for this dragon as well. Although Cream, re weird reset timer here. Gonna go back to base, but maybe that opens up TL to try and contest on this dragon because they have multiple members down here. Okay, they're still gonna they're gonna come over, but it might be a little bit late. I think the damage will be enough here for top. Uh, no problem. Finish that one up quickly. Dragon taken down. We take a look back at. Who knows which of the five minutes of this fight we'll be watching, <laughs> but it appears we're starting from the beginning, John. All right, from minute one, here we go, team fight. Uh, double teleport comes in from TL, uh, trying to fight off under the turret here. As you mentioned, though, both Yon and Core JJ were so low that they pretty much instantly die at the beginning. And then it's the chase from the double solo laners here. As uh, Impact just flashes in, he knows like this is kind of a critical point for TL. They needed to get some money back for themselves. And here comes a 360 from the Dragon. APA cruises in. Can't quite get Jackie as Jackie flashes away. Yeah, Jackie has a plot armor this game. The fact is that it's a flash away against Yon and now APA as well. He just refuses to die to the Dragons. But as his spoil groups are up, TL in the area, and that's a big old ultimate for APA. Just a reminder that Jackie Love has been scary despite not farming, and it's actually Mako who has all the money. 2,000 gold ahead of poor JJ, as is standard, although a pretty sizable lead. The good news for TL, though, they have the Skies Descend. They have the Empowered Aurelian Soul Ultimate. Yon getting closer to that 125 breakpoint, which will only accelerate the rate at which he approaches. 225, so scaling with the Double Dragons. Still the name of the game. And for now, TL holding on is 369. He's trying to get a few extra plays. It's the map play from top esports, though, which is going to be the problem. As you start to open up and 369 can get this tower, you're already looking at two turret plates gone on top side as well. When you're able to push in on these side lanes and avoid a lot of the 
uh, team fights that are coming from TL, that's where you're going to be under a lot of threat. So I think TL need to start working on how their defensive vision is going to work. Make sure they spread out across the map so you can spot movements like this and not get caught out by top esports. One last plate remaining. 15 seconds till it falls away. It seems like TES very determined to secure it for themselves. This is risky. Yeah. Core walking in. Yeah, does have a bit of support here as the tower falls. It becomes a bit more of a risky proposition. Keep your eyes on that TF ulti. Where is he going to go? Yawn off to the backside. Not able to do much of anything. Core taken out before there's even any fight to speak of. Umji, though, untouched. Tian about to fall. Here comes Bomb for a bit of backup, but it's 369 on the backside. Unprotected. The exhaust on impact is clutch. Jackie coming over the wall with the piercing shadow. And TES take another fight. And in the top side, Mako solo kills APA as well. Why we're watching this fight. And Cream now finds Umji. Umji? Good damage here. Doesn't have the ulti. Has the flash, however, but Jackie Love's already on the way. The healing from the center probably enough to keep Cream standing, but Jackie Love wants to keep fighting. Or JJ's here. Umpty. Or JJ. Hook. Side step from Jackie Love. Not going to work. Knock up. Where's it going to go? Tien now going to dash in. Yawn on the way. 122 stacks. Might be able to get a bit more here, but TES. Flawless retreat. They don't give up another member. Now they have a teleport. <laughs> they, oh my god! Oh my, it, <laughs> if, it doesn't stop. If they had baited TL in a little bit further into the jungle, then they could have turned that around as well with the teleport coming through. But they are going to call it quits this time around. The objective bounties have spawned on the map here uh, with the giant lead that top esports have accrued already. So that's got to be the goal for Team Liquid. Try and focus on one half of this map here. Grab some objective bounties. This game's class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving all the TPs that we're seeing. I'm loving that everyone just wants to fight, but here, this is what, what we were saying, the solo kill coming through from Mako in that top side. Part of the Forge God catches APA before he gets over the wall. The knockup as he starts to go into that cosmic flight, and the one-shot potential is just through the roof for this orb. Yeah, Mako's done being the supporting cast. He wants to be the main character. As we can see here again in the mid lane, Jan now backing up. And a bit of poke means a few extra stacks, but Jackie Love stacking just as rapidly. 59 about to be 60 for the Senna. Jackie Love unafraid of Umpty. Root will not connect. Tunnel will take him out to safety. The hilarious thing as well, by the way, that isn't Mako's first solo kill this MSI. He already got one as well against Fnatic, so Mako's popping off, and now he's moving into the mid lane while Tien moves up towards APA in the top side. Yeah, those world champions, pretty good. Pretty good. Five world champions in this game. Unfortunately, Top Esports have three of them, so... Ah, yes. that's what you're what, okay. what we Wait, do? but T1 is five. What do we do? Uh, well, <laughs> we saved that problem for G2 Esports. For now, it's TEL versus TES. And unsurprisingly, the MasterCard lane economy snapshot favoring TES at this point in the game. But again, a lot of the intangibles, a lot of the power of the TL composition is not in the gold. It's the champions they have chosen. So we'll see. I, I do want to point out, because it's so funny, uh, to have a lane economy snapshot and a Senna, uh, fasting Senna, that is ahead. <laughs> Yeah, a head of gold as the fasting one. Oh. Well, Here comes APA, 369. Extra shielding coming over the top. Impact taken down. APA going to be forced to use the empowered ulti just to lock up 369. They haven't spotted Jackie Love. Won't go for any follow up here, but Mom called. Tiana Mako backing away slowly. Of course, they have the Herald in their back pocket if they want to use it, but we'll just set their sights on mid. It's similar to the last game, though, where top esports get to this point where they're like, cool, we can take these extended skirmishes in a four versus five scenario. Cream is just pushing on that top side, gets the tower. They go one for one of that bot trade. They still get a ton of ultimates out of TL. And yes, the dragon's up, but you're about to lose two towers as TL. We make a force to fight. TP in. Hook, good started off. They got a TP flank off to the side. Jackie Love needs to get the hell out. We'll just back away. Impact. Nice step with the scrap shield, the extra bit of movement speed. Dragon will be secured. They get a TV out of the side of TES, but as you mentioned, Cream on the top side of the map, grabbing yet another tower. Yeah, I'm gonna get hooked on Spig. APA now coming in. Ulti from the Twisted Faith. They might need to retreat. Umpty waiting. There's no angle for TES to approach. They get the info, but they just don't have the members. Yeah, 369 just goes to the bottom side instead. And remember, that is an objective bounty shutdown there, grabbing that dragon. Now with 369 going to the bottom side, he has no flash, but he does have exhaust. Looks like he knows Team Liquid are overloading this side of the map, and he's getting out of there. He may not get out of there, though. Umpty's coming, and for JJ flash. over the wall. Spots the Nautilus. Well, oh, he's not he's walk away, he'll take the crumb, and now it's the dragon who's in trouble. Impact throws down the ulti, but it's too late already. Jack, you love just throwing down damage. Mako not even needed, he doesn't push a single button. Champions are just falling down around him. TL looked good on the bottom side, weren't able to find the angle, and TES are quick with the counterpunch.
Umti trying to stay it over the wall, though. See if he can set up for APA. He knows the cream's relatively low, but I just don't think he can take this fight. Mako's huge with Jackie Love behind him. APA. I think you just have to retreat here. APA forced to flash. Not quite respecting the engage potential of Mako's Orn. Umti's still there. Umti's still looking for anyone on the exit. A lot of things happening Don't in this game. Cream. Does he know it's cream, though? Yes. <laughs> surely, surely make those footsteps are way more impactful than cream with a little dog. You, know? uh, you understand. Orn well. studied ballet when he was oh, young. Okay, you know, yeah. Very light on his feet. <laughs> I will say, though, it's sick to see Mako performing this well because it was him coming off of EDG into top esports was always going to be such a risk like nearly a decade with Edward Gaming a world championship an MSI championship but this man is performing so well alongside Jackie Lowe but immediately murdering anyone on TL that steps up and you can see this fight is so tough but to build on what you said Rob it's it's not just what Mako has done for top esports it's also what Mako has done for Jackie Lowe right this duo is so lethal so consistently oppressive and it feels like every matchup we have seen so far certainly this tournament and in so many in the the LPL as well. They are terrifying. TL are experiencing it firsthand that even when it's a Senna Orn, not the Lucian Nami, these guys, uh, you know, are to be feared. They certainly are. Meanwhile, TL looking again. Going in. Mako quick retreat out. Root on the core JJ. Just a bit of poking and prodding on both sides. And pack stepping up. Cream off to the side. No package. A little bit of lockup on Mako. Jackie Love and Cream firing back with a bit of poke of their own. Alti now coming in. Orn Alti. Brilliant Soul, he's not gonna hit, now it's all falling apart. TES, turn and collapse in an instant. 369 off to the side, gold card locked and ready. Not gonna be able to lock up Yon, but hitting impact. He goes golden, but he's just setting up for the ball from Cream, the rocket perfectly timed. Cream on a rampage, yes. and that's TN over the wall, flashing with confidence to secure the kill onto APA. Yon just praying for stacks here, trying to clear the wave. TES don't even want to commit for the dive, instead setting their sights on the Baron. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to be able to get it, too, because only Yon and Core JJ, with Yon being so low, teleport up. I mean, Core JJ is going to come out and check, but all you really can do is, is stand and watch. TPs. They're, all right. Throw a skill shot in there and hope that there's a mixed flash. Oh, oh Core JJ. <laughs> TES, though, not going to take the bait. They don't quite have the information they need to immediately turn on the core JJ. They got the Baron. They will back away. The map going to reset, but okay. they managed to find the pick. Well timed from core JJ. Umpty now on the fall. They'll at least be able to take away one Baron buff. Oh, they're coming back. Not going to leave a man behind. Mako, the double TP going in. Going about to hit over to the 225 breakpoint, but it doesn't matter. Jungler already down. Core JJ on the retreat, hooking back to the wall, flashing out. TES ruthless on the turn. They immediately answer with both the TPs. Charles Harold still. Well, that thing's going straight down mid. Uh -huh. And so is the Baroned Up TES squad as Mako tries to chase them through their own jungle. Got his level lead on Yon as well. Where'd the Herald go? There we go. Drive it right on down. Inhibitor tower exploded. Nice use of the E from APA. Incredible ability for stalling waves, but yet another charge is going to come through. Mako. Not quite able to get a third charge here as TL doing what they can to hold on. One inhibitor already down. ES got with the cane force, shifting their sights now to the bottom side of the map where 369 is already pushing in. And you've already got 20 seconds essentially until this dragon comes up. So mid wave is already shoved in, bot wave now shoved in. You basically collect it on the way back out. They're going to look for the reset. It's, it's so difficult for TL to try and respond to any of this right now. They can't well. up on the tier two. I mean, maybe they can defend in hips, they can stall. Big stack breakpoint for Yawn, but again, only one and a half items means, yeah, the kit is favoring you right now, but the items are probably just too far behind. APA at least collecting enough of Stardust for the empowered ultimate. Again, though, it does have to be like a play where they have giant numbers advantage and you just have the dragon cruising in over a wall where uh, Core JJ has already locked somebody up because other than that, TS yeah, just too big of a wallet here. Too many items on basically everybody. 
uh, to be able to get some even fights. Yeah, you need it to be top esports. Everyone's grouped up. Everyone gets hit by the center portion of APA's ultimate. Umpty immediately knocks up. Impact following over the top of his ult. Yawn coming in with Mob. Like, this massive AoE wombo combo to try and hit before TN gets his ult off. But it's just so difficult because top esports aren't playing as one big unit. They're attacking multiple different side lanes. You can see now pushing top as mid is shoved in. And 369 is now drifting across into that mid lane as well. Umpty finding a little bit of poke that he can. You can see the execution threshold on Jackie loves health bar, but they're very far away from that point. This ulti from APA has to be flawless. Hook in from Core JJ, not immediately going to connect, but that's the ulti onto Jackie Love. Yawn can't get to the back line, and Cream immediately going to respond. Yes, the center doesn't have the damage, but the Corky service held does. Instant follow up from 369, the double kill for the Twisted Fate. TES going for the end in an instant. They shut down TL, their hopes of scaling, their hopes of getting these dragons into a powerful state, and they will move on to match point in the first best of five of MSI 2024. Top Esports, pretty good team, pretty good team. What do you think our chances for the reverse sweep are? <laughs> I just thought we would only see Drake's getting bodied on Twitter, but here they are at MSI. Uh, a lot of them going down that game, I can say with the Aurelian Soul as well as the Smolder. You know, it looked a little bit better. It wasn't quite as dominant. <laughs> it wasn't as quick. It was, you know what, it was, yeah, it was. Well, actually it was 24 minutes. What was the first one? <laughs> uh, pretty quick. <laughs> All right, I will say, we just have to hope that TL have something else up their sleeve. Can rally, can focus, but right now, TES feel like a tall challenge for any team, and TL certainly experiencing that firsthand. I think the problem is that Top Esports kind of got shook by Fnatic, where they've now come into this and gone, we cannot let the same thing happen. We were sloppy, we got caught out, and we have seen one or two minor errors, you know, 369 getting caught out on weird resets, but outside of that, it's been very, very clean from Top Esports, and when they're getting control of bot, they're getting control over mid, it just feels so difficult to do. Absolutely does. Certainly a difficult puzzle to solve. For now, though, don't forget to log into lolesports.com using your Riot ID to earn exclusive MSI 2024 drops. And in the meantime, let's head on over to the analyst desk to break that one down. Thank you so much. It is Top Esports that finds themselves in, uh, yeah, I mean, mm. like an hour of play on the Rift on Throw Match Point towel. already. <laughs> Raz had his team End liquid the fight. Towel. No, end the fight. Just Raz, stop. stop it. Actually, you just want to stop now. Is that is that <laughs> your preferred uh, approach? No. <laughs> okay. No. Give us a chance. Come on. Are you ready for the greatest comeback in professional League of Legends history? I am. How I'm, does it I'm happen? Not. Oh, you're not. Bad. Okay. Uh, it's looking pretty grim. So I will say, uh, in terms of the draft, and this is going to sound like a really dumb point when yeah. a team just lost in 24 minutes by like 100,000 gold. I didn't actually hate the Team Liquid team comp. Uh, if you're going to play against a team that is better than you, you may as well play your best stuff. Yeah. And like it or not, this was one of Team Liquid's best comps throughout playoffs when they did the double dragon and tried to it's kind of like a one punch comp like if they win one team fight they win the game but yeah. they were so slammed which is unfortunate since it's not like Mako is known for Orn or Cream is known for his Corky it's yes. the opposite yeah, of that yeah it's opposite fact and yeah. 369 on his TF so I mean this was definitely a top esports sending a statement yeah and even though there were trades that were happening early like for instance the bot dive I think they covered decently uh, with TPs Overall, it felt like every play that was happening before the deciding one was just top esports inching ahead again mm. and again. It is, and uh, it was a very different way from when they won that first game. You yes. know, there was a lot of chaos. There were a lot of pickoffs, and TES, they uh, cleanly played the fight in Botside River in the HyperX Reflex replay, which was just one of many things that did not go the way of Team Liquid. Yeah, I mean, this fight uh, was very well played, and this is what I, I looked to Raz while this fight was happening I'm like oh actually this was them like styling with their fingers because this is a fight that uh, could go either way except TES just makes so many individual outplays that it goes largely in their favor yeah and the positive thing from TN side because even though from uh, Medline Team Liquid is looking to support them this is just bot prio from Jackie Love and Mako with Senna ulti there too with flash up from TN so even with the ulti coming from Yan to try and finish him off he flashes at the right uh, time and it was just top esports cleaning up after that yeah, up and to the right as well for the gold graph uh, on TES. Nearly as dominant in objectives, getting uh, three of the four Drakes, but actually splitting the Void Grub. So, you know, not quite as objective owning, but I think a more even more dominant game than game one here. And the worst thing 
that's tough to address in, in between games is the time between the plays because it felt like they were bleeding the time between each play. Mm. Great example was actually Impact when uh, Void Grubs was happening top lane. He goes over, he dies in that one. Actually, when they needed to defend mid lane because there was three chipping it, Impact once again goes over and he dies. A lot of the times there's just isolated deaths that's happening from top, uh, Team Liquid side. That's just whenever they have at least some tempo they can play mm. with or a play they can they get an early base off. Mm. Then they have to delay by 20 or so seconds and then top esports can end up making a play of their own. So it's actually quite, it's pretty brutal to go into the third game yeah. and try to reset off of two games in which you are just either getting completely thrashed in game one yep. and then you're making some positive plays, but a lot of the time in the dead time within the game, you're getting picked off. Yeah, we don't have the, or I saw it, behind me, the reaction cams from TL uh, coaching squad during some of the highlights of that game. They look defeated. Um, mm. Not to say that, of course, it is their job to come up with solutions, quite obviously. Sure. So is there anything that you, you could throw out there? I mean, you know, Fnatic took one game off them, right? Off a I good mean, mid lane performance off Humanoid. Like, is there anything to, to replicate? Yeah, I mean, there's still definitely more stuff they can try. And actually, to me, uh, Team Liquid has had two pretty separate strategies in both games. And I think they probably have a third and even fourth one. I, what I'm expecting, based off what I've seen, is for Team Liquid to put Umpty on a comfort pick. Yeah. I yeah. think he's probably looked um, in terms of the difference between how they look in LCS to how he's looking this series that's the biggest drop off that I've seen so get him on like his signature champion let him really try and flip the game which he's done so often and I actually think they should just pick another 2v2 fighting lane like they should just an early Callista again and actually go toe to toe I think at this point since TS has the buffer they're not going to do the lane swap for practice or something I think they'd actually try and style on him and like it's unlikely that Team Liquid even take a game but I think that's what they're going to do yeah, flip it on your own. Don't let them flip it for you sure, at the exactly. very, very least. Okay, uh, let's see if Team Liquid can pull off the reverse sweep. They'd have to put a lot into it starting from game three, or if it will be TES cleaning out the day, um, closing out the day cleanly, rather. We will be right back. I mean, Raz, is either going to be a fast day or a fun day, right? True. Yep, well, we'll see. <laughs> Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that old thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage, so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon.
<laughs> Red Bull gives you wings.